Okay, so now you have signed up for Dynamics 65 trial. It means you are free to use it for next 30 days. So what you need to do now is uh, understand the basic structure of Dynamics 65 application, what functionalities it has, and then you start using it. So now we'll start with the first module that is called Dynamics 65 for sales. And I'm going to explain you the basic terminologies you should be aware of because if you don't understand the basic functionalities or basic terminologies, you will not be able to understand and you will not be able to use the application. So first I'm going to explain you the important terminologies you should be aware of. Then I'm going to explain you the complete sales process, how it works in Dynamics 65. And then I'm going to run you through the application where you can see how you can work around with the application, right? So let's jump into this one. The first is understanding the sales important terminologies. So the first thing you should understand is all about accounts. So accounts is an organization. So this includes customer, vendor, partner, affiliate, or anyone. So when you are doing a business with any company, then you capture those company details in here in the accounts entity. So whenever I say entity, entity is nothing but a place where you can store the records or store the data, right? So account is an entity and where you capture the organization details that you're dealing with. So if you have a customer that is a company, then you capture those details in the accounts entity. The next one is contacts. So contact is an individual. A contact is also your customer, but it is an individual person. And contact can be associated with maximum of one account, which is called its primary contact. So for any company whom you're doing business with, you will need a person whom you're going to interact with, right? So that becomes your primary contact. So you can associate a contact to an account. Contacts and accounts are your customers. Accounts are organizations and contacts are individuals. Let's move to the next one. The next one is leads. Leads is a prospect and it can be your potential customer or your potential sale. So whenever you meet someone, they give you your business card or they give you some, some information about them. So that becomes your lead, right? So you capture those leads in your Dynamics 365 sales module. And it can be a potential customer. It means the person who has never done the business before with you and uh, they are meeting it for the first time. So you, that can be your potential customer. And uh, it can be your potential sale as well. It means the customer is existing, but there's a new opportunity they want to work with you, right? So that can become your potential sale. So every sales process starts with the lead generation or leads that you interact with them and you start following up with them, right? So lead is a prospect. The next is opportunity. So opportunity is a potential sale. It means that lead is almost ready to buy. So when you have the lead ready, it means they ask you for more information. Then it means that they are interested and they are ready to buy. And you can create opportunities manually also. So you don't have to follow the lead to opportunity process, but you can also create an opportunity directly in the system. And it is attached to an account or contact because you should know that whom you are going to sell, right? And there you identify the customer needs, what are the pain points they have, what exactly the solution they are looking for, and what solution that you have proposed to them, right? So you capture all those details in opportunity. So opportunity is your potential sale, which is the next step of lead. The next one is quotes. So quote is a document for prospect and customer with all the details. So when your lead is ready to buy, that becomes your opportunity. And when your prospect is interested in your product and services, they ask you for a quote, right? So quote includes the product they want to purchase, the quantity that they are looking at, the price that you are offering to them, payment terms that you have defined and the other important details that you capture in court. So once you have the code in place, you can send it to the customer and then basically they can take decision. How do they go about it? Right? So code is a document for prospect and customer with all the details that you're offering to them. The next is orders. So orders is a confirmation from customer that they are purchasing your product or services. So it can be created from the code. It means you don't have to manually enter it again if the code is available. All you can do is create the order from the code and uh, all the information that is there in the code will get transferred to order. And it can also be created manually so you don't have to follow the entire process. In case if the customer is really interested and they have given you the order, you can directly create order in Dynamics 65 for sales. The next is invoices. So it is a document that you use to bill your customer for using your product and services, right? So it is sent to the customer once you have fulfilled the order. So once you get the order, you fulfill the requirements, you fulfill what you have you have promised them. It means you deliver your product or services or you deliver that if you're doing training, then you deliver the training. 
Once it is finished, you send them an invoice. Sending an invoice ensures that customer is going to pay you for that services that they have used, right? And it can also be created manually. It means you don't have to follow the entire process of lead, opportunity, quote, order, invoice. You can directly create an invoice in case if you have a repeated customer and they are using your services regularly. So you can create the invoice manually and bill any customer. Then you have competitors. So it's a place where you capture all your competitor details. So when you are bidding for any project, if some other company is also bidding for that same project, then you should know that, okay, what they are good at, what they are bad at, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, what is the product offering they have, and what quality they have, right? So those kind of information you can capture in competitors and you can attach it with your sales process. So you will know that I'm competing with this competitor which has these other qualities, these are weaknesses. So you can keep track of them and then you can win because once you know that what their weaknesses are or what their qualities are, you can cha make changes to your offering accordingly and uh, give it to the customer for winning the lead, right? So understanding competitors is very, very important in any business. The next one is sales literature. It's a centralized repository for sales related documents. And this can include your brochures, the brochures that you have, the product guides. So if you have multiple products, then uh, what those specifications of the products and what guides are available so that you can give it to the customer and they can see their complete specification. You can also capture your competitor information. You can also have pricing and discounts details in the sales repository and other sales documents, right? So sales literature is a centralized repository of sales documents. Then next you have product catalog. So product catalog is a collection of product and its pricing information. When you have any product or services, you can create that under product. You can define the unit group. It means that for the particular product, how do you sell it? How do you purchase it? For example, a PC can be sold in numbers. And if you are selling your training services, then you can charge customer on hourly basis. So you can define hour as a unit group. So there you can capture the unit groups. You can define the price list according to the segmentation of your customers. So you can define multiple price lists for different customers. And you can also define discount list. So in case if somebody buys from 0 to 10, it means you will get 5% discount. If they buy from 11 to 25, then you get 20% discount, right? So those kind of discounts you can define in the discount list. So the entire product related configuration, pricing, product details, discounts, everything is captured and maintained in product catalog. The next is goals. So goals are used to keep track of the progress on achieving your targets. Whatever revenue that you have planned for the particular quarter or year or half year, you can keep track of those goals here. So you can define your goal details that, okay, what exactly the goal is. So for example, a goal can be that a sales manager needs to meet his 100,000 US dollars target in this quarter, right? So those you can define, you can define the period type. You can define the goal revenue target that how much you want to achieve and also the actual goal that you can keep track of. So as soon as the opportunities are closed, you will see that the actual sales are making. So for example, the target is 100,000 US dollars and your team has closed an opportunity worth $20,000. Then you will know that, okay, this is the plan I have, 100,000 US dollars and 20,000 is already closed. So this is automatically calculated by application and give you the real time picture on how you're performing on your goals. And also you can define goal matrix. So goal matrix explain how the goal number or figure is measured. It's important to define that what is a goal matrix? Uh, what is a goal matrix type, whether it's a count or amount. So for sales, it is going to be amount. For example, if you want to see how many calls the person has made in a day, then that becomes your count. Right. So you can define that matrix to measure goal and you can also create roll up fields for calculation. So as you have seen in the goals, that actual revenue is calculated through roll up fields. So you can define those roll up fields for calculation that whether it's going to be some of all the opportunities that are with status one or some of all the opportunities which are closed. Right. So those things you can define the roll up fields. So these are the basic terminologies that you should be aware of before you start using Dynamics 65. Alright, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next video tutorial explaining the complete sales process of Dynamics 65.